And that's why I call that the back saver knot. So now I can get in here without bending over and get the stuff that I need out of here to do whatever it is I need to do. And then it's called the gear lash because when you actually put it up, it has a lot of tension taken out with the wraps and the fraps, but it truly gets tight when you pull it apart like a pair of shears. That makes this a rock solid bipod. Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Great Bird of Green Beret. Just wanted to take a minute and welcome you back to the series. Hope you're enjoying it. If you want to get a copy of all the gear that I use throughout this series, you can get a free downloadable packing list. I'll put that link in the description below. Also, if you're enjoying this series and you want to get the full film commercial free and all together, not broken up over the next several weeks, you can purchase the film still from my website. You can stream it. You can get it on your very own USB thumb drive, which is pretty handy. Replaces the download or you can get it on a three disc DVD set. Highly recommend you add those so that you can get the full experience of watching everything together. If you like this series, you like the film, I'd encourage you to get my book. Everything that you see me do in the Into the Woods series and a heck of a lot more is all packed inside this book. And you can get this from my website. You can get it on Amazon. I'll put all the links in the description below. Click those get the film, get the book, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Into the Woods. All right, so I wanna kinda of show you real quick what I call the back saver knot. Uh, getting up there in the years and getting the, the beards more and more gray, so bending over to pull things out of my pack is not something I like to do uh, if I don't have to. So the back saver knot is also known as a marlin spike hitch. A marlin spike is something that uh, people that work with ropes a lot use. Uh, and it's basically a steel spike that's used for working rope and getting knots out. Uh, so a marlin spike hitch, if you think of that, a hitch is an anchor knot. So basically marlin spike hitch is an anchor knot that incorporates our marlin spike. I don't have a marlin spike with me, so we're just gonna use a toggle to simulate what that marlin spike would do. Uh, and this is based on, you know, kind of the same way that I tie my ridge lines, you know, with the, with the quick release hanking. And it's got an end of the line bowling in it. This is just a shorter one that I keep in my pocket. Um, but I've got an end of the line bowling on that. And what I want to do is a running bowling around wherever I want to hang my gear. So I'll take that end of the line bowling around. About the height I want it. And I just bring the end through. And I could toggle that right there to make a toggled running bowling, but I just want a simple running bowling where I run the end through that bowling and it basically creates a slip knot here that I can lock that down on. Now with this portion that's hanging down here, I'm gonna tie the actual Marlin spike hitch. To make the Marlin spike hitch, all you have to do is create a loop. So essentially we're doing an overhand slip. Create a loop and then flip that loop, I should say, because so, this can be done wrong. When you have this loop, your longer standing end that's going to the ground should be away from you. And what you wanna do is flip this like so. I've created this window. My clean side, if you think of it that way, uh, based on the way I teach how to tie a bowline and how to tie an overhand slip, my clean side is up towards the top side anchor. My dirty side is starting to form down here at the bottom. Pull a bite through, like so. And this essentially, sorry, try that again. Can't work under these conditions. This is essentially where my toggle is gonna go, where my marlin spike goes through. And then that locks down. And where that dirty side formed, that's your overhand knot that formed and locked that in place. So as that weight pulls on it, it won't slip out. So that is the Marlin spike hitch. I'm gonna bring this up a little higher. Lock it in there. And then that gives me a toggle to place through the carrying strap 
and hang my gear. And that's why I call that the back saver knot. So now I can get in here without bending over and get the stuff that I need out of here to do whatever it is I need to do. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick shear lash to lash these two poles together from my shelter. These trees are pretty far apart, so putting up my typical ridge line is not something I'm really gonna be able to do here. So I want to create some artificial structure here. I guess it's natural structure, I should say. It's not really artificial. So I put my ends together on these two poles. And starting about six to eight inches down, I wanna begin my shear lash. And typically you'll start a shear lash with some sort of anchoring hitch. Now, a lot of folks use a clove hitch first and then do their fraps and or their wraps and their fraps and finish with a clove hitch. I like to use the timber hitch just because it's a chance to teach another knot and the timber hitch is very useful. So to make the timber hitch you just got to create a bite. Hold those together I'll stick my finger in there and twist it a few times, you know, six to eight times. And then that creates a loop with some twists down here. I'll bring my end through there. That creates another loop. And you can put that over both of them or you can put it over one. I'll put it over both. And then pull against that. And what that does is locks down on itself here. All right, that's a useful knot for other purposes. So it's called the timber hitch because that's what you would quickly tie around the end of a long piece of timber. You know, so you could pull it out by a horse or mule so that, and it's easy to take off because it's basically held on by tension and friction. So once that's on and locked in, I'm gonna follow that around and I'm gonna do just a few wraps because this isn't holding any actual body weight, I just need it to maintain the structure. I'll capture this tail on my way around, and I'm wrapping from bottom towards the top of what will be the top of the poles. Typically I'll do six wraps and then, or four to six wraps, two to three fraps. I'll probably only do three or four wraps with two frapping turns. And the timber hitch doesn't count, so that's one, two, three wraps, so I'll do one more and I'll pull those tight, okay? Now from here, I need to change directions. These are my wraps, which hold it together this way, and then my frapping turns need to go the opposite direction, perpendicular to that. And that binds those together really tight. It makes for a really secure lashing. So I can either dive through here, or I can come around, and instead of coming all the way around the back side, I can come up and split the middle and I'm gonna release some of that tension so I can get it into the middle. And pull that tight. Caught on a knot. Work it in there. And if you get stuck on something, what you can use is what's called a frapping stick. It's just another stick. Wrap it around a few times to put some friction, uh, some friction on there and then use that to really pull. There we go. Now I can continue my frapping. I wanted that to sit right up against those wraps. Come down through the center. And I'm gonna do that one more time. That's one frap, I'm gonna do a second frapping turn. Pull some tension on those and really lock that lashing into place with those wraps. It's easiest to take the slack out as you go rather than try to get it all towards the end. Come back through. And from here, 
I've only got one frap on the back, so I'm going to come through another time to complete that. Use my frapping stick to tighten it up nicely. And then I'm going to finish it with a clove hitch. I started with a timber hitch down here. I'm finishing with a clove hitch on the opposing corner. So all a clove hitch is is two half hitches. So if I come around and come back through, I've created that first half hitch. Now as the name implies, a half hitch is by itself is not a knot, it's half of a hitch. You need a second half hitch to make it a full knot and when you do opposing half hitches like I'm doing now, you're going to end up with what's called a clove hitch. So my second half hitch follows that around. There we go. And I want to tie that on the inside of that. So now if you look at what's forming, I have two parallel wraps and I have a diagonal locking bar. And I'm doing this kind of offset to the side so you can see the clove hitch being formed. But I want that to be resting against the actual wraps. So I'm going to tighten that a little, slide it down all the way around. And then what you can do is use your frapping stick to pull that clove hitch tight. And what I like to do is do a overhand stopper which this has a stopper in the end, but I want it down here right up against the locking bar of that clove hitch. So overhand is just making a, a loop and then coming back through. Come back through, push that right up against that locking bar. And that's the shear lash. And then it's called the shear lash because when you actually put it up, It has a lot of tension taken out with the wraps and the fraps, but it truly gets tight when you pull it apart like a pair of shears. That makes this a rock solid bipod right here. So that is the shear lash. This is a two pole shear lash. It can also be done with three poles and that would be a three pole shear lash. Not to be confused with the tripod lash, which is a slightly different technique of tying. I wasn't supposed to happen that way. <laughs>